On this episode... One, two, and three. Oh, done. Kate goes to unusual lengths... I think it's on the pad. ...to treat Skippy after a nasty accident at the beach. Whoa. Shards of glass. How are we going to get all this out? Oh, darling. Danny's heartbreaking challenge. Oh, my God. Oh, poor cats. To try to save brave little Moe. I'm finally doing what I trained for. His mouth is just something that... I think I've never seen. And Scott's close encounter... Jinx is the definition of a shark dog. ...with an extraordinary dental case. That's insane. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Where's your sore paw? This one? Is this your sore paw? Mm -hmm. At Kate's Bondi Veterinary Hospital, Dan has brought in his golden retriever Skippy after the two-year-old had a painful accident at the beach. <gasps> Skip! How are you? You knew it was me, didn't you? Are you good? You're looking good. Yeah, he's got a sore paw. It's not very good, is no, it? No. Come on, Skip. Come on, Skip, let's go. It's always happy to see the vet. Skip. Oh, he loves coming here. Super yeah. enthusiastic. <laughs> Come on, Skip. Come on, Skip. Come on, Skip. Yeah. I know golden retrievers, and they don't ever show much pain. So this is as much of a limp that you're ever going to get out of a golden retriever. So Skip has had a limp. I can see as soon as he walked in, yeah. he's got a limp on that left fork. Yeah, the kids took him for a walk down the beach and he stepped into a rock pool and there was a bit of a broken glass bottle. They got it out, or what they thought was most of it. Skip, hey, you're the wrong way. This way. Come here, Skip. This way. Because of Skippy's size, Kate is going to use an unconventional method to get a close-up look at his injured foot. One, two, three. Oh, done. There we go. Like this, a big tummy rub. Let's have a look at this foot, kid. This one. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. I think it's on the pad. Yeah, no, you're right. So what he's got here is a nasty gash mm. to this outer paw pad. Doesn't so like it. Mm. It's very sore. It's okay. Don't worry. Oh, no. It's okay. So I can see, just from me doing even a little tiny touch, that Skippy is going to absolutely crack it if I touch that little wound. So he is an unhappy golden retriever. So what I'd ideally like to do is actually open it all up and have a look if there's still glass mm. stuck in that yeah. hole. I have a feeling that there probably is. Yeah, he's very, he didn't like it, did yeah. he? Um, I also have this feeling that it's starting to look a little bit infected. Right. I need to make sure that if there is even the smallest, tiniest piece of glass in that foot, that we find it and we get it out for him. So what we're going to do with Skip is I'm going to put an IV catheter in. Is your dad going to leave you here? Mm. Yeah. There is absolutely no point in putting Skip through the stress of having a dig around in this foot without sedating him. You got this, my little friend. He's not being great with getting the catheter in. Skippy, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So we're talking 40 kilos of dog here. Don't do it, Skip, come on, you got this bad. When Skippy doesn't want to do something, you know, Skippy really doesn't want to do something. We're gonna get it this time, man. Yep. It's a scary ordeal for the Don't. young dog, and he's so nervous, it's making Kate's job tricky. It's in. Oh my God. Let's just all calm down. Hey, I'm ready. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and Jake are on their way to pick up an unusually large lunch order. Whoa! Watch out there! For a cantankerous crocodile called Elvis. Dan's the worst driver on earth. You got it? Yep. Today is a big day at the Reptile Park. Exciting, rewarding, and very dangerous. <laughs> nice! nice. Good bit, very nice. We've got to feed Elvis with a half a cow. Rope's on? Yeah, rope's ready to go. If you trust my knot. Oh, what'd you do if you don't know knots, tie lots? Tie lots. <laughs> That's a good knot. That's my best knot. 
Good morning, big fella. There's a big chunk of beef making its way through the park. Whose ears prick up? The carnivores. They can smell it. Hey, Dina. Hey, Lucky. Hey, Freddy. Oh, the devils are straight onto it. You can smell it. The park's coming to life. There he is. From the second we arrived at Elvis's yard, his eyes popped out of his head. That tells me one thing. Elvis has smelt the beef and he knows what's coming. Shall we have a little briefing? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Sounds good. But we've also got a couple of rookies along, young Jake and young Sam. It's the first time they've ever done this. So that brings in a sense of nervousness, excitement, but it's key for them to learn and develop in these areas. It's arguably the most dangerous job you can do at the park. Safety's paramount. You two lads haven't done this before. So listen to the people that have, and people that have, look after our mates. And mate, no trips, no slips, no falls. That's gonna be insanely challenging. Like the power which they've got is insane. So it's gonna take more than just me, a couple of the boys to be able to keep that food away from him. Let's just hope I don't need a spare pair of undies after today. We all know this is in the interest of enriching Elvis's day, you know? That's why we're doing it. Anything you wanna add, mate? Yeah, real simple. Um, I'll be on croc. If I say get out, get out. No Straight practice on. runs. No practice runs. No I, practice runs. I don't runs. muck around. If I say get out, like I've nearly seen this go wrong before. It cost me 20 stitches in my leg. You get out quick. That's the result of the fence. Bit of fun and games. We enjoy it, but it's very serious. And when it goes wrong, I mean, that was wrong and he busted it on the fence. Thankfully, it wasn't Elvis. Uh, and we learnt from that, so no mistakes today. Here he comes. He knows. We're talking about a croc here that's eating lawnmowers. If we try and get the meat in now, he will charge us. I reckon he's looking at us. Oh, he's there he's he keeping is. an eye on us, is he? <laughs> That's a bit scary, actually. Yeah, he's ready. We're now going to slip Dan and Sam in, and they're going to lure Elvis around the other side of the yard. You're acutely aware of the fact that, you know, you slip up, the end result can be death. Righto, boys, take it away. All right, Sam, you with me? Yep. Let's go. Just watch Elvis on that bit, Sam. I'm going to go to the back wall. <laughs> he's on you. He can smell fresh blood. Who do we have first today? At the Lost Dogs home in North Melbourne, Danny's shift is about to start. Oh, little Mo. Okay, great. Hi, Mo. Good morning. Attendant Ashley is getting the first patient, a 10-month-old stray cat called Mo. Hello. You want to have some playtime later? I have some cuddles. Are you in a good mood? Hey, Hi. Ashley. How's it going? Hey, how are you? This is Mo. Hi, Danny. Hi. He's You're such a, a sweet little boy. Isn't he smoochy? Mm. I haven't been working at the Lost Dogs home very long, but it feels like I've found my home. Hi. Very oh, happy, very friendly. Oh. Always happy to see hey. people. Oh, sweet. Have a bit you of just a play. want to go and explore, <laughs> don't you, hey? It's feared the young stray may be suffering from some sort of injury. How did little Mo come to us, do you know? I don't know his full story. I know that he was a stray that was brought in by one of our local councils. Okay, sure. So he's most likely a street cat hey. making it on his own. Oh, well, you're very sweet. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously had some sort of trauma because I've heard that he's got an AVOLS lip. So I'll just see if he'll let me have a little look at that. So that right side, oh yes, I can see. So I'm just having a look at Mo's mouth and I can see that there's a section of his lip that has actually been ripped off his bone. Oh, darling. But he's still this happy little sweet smoochy cat. <laughs> so that would have hurt so much. His poor lip has actually been ripped off his jaw, my gosh. The area of the mouth that's affected at the moment is, is looking like it's healing quite nicely, which is good, but I am concerned as to whether there's been any damage to the canine. So we will need to get some dental x-rays today to have a look at the tooth and also the bones in the jaw. I wonder what's happened to you, my darling. I've noticed as well, I don't know if there's something happened to his back legs, his hind legs. Okay. He walks a little bit funny sometimes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have a Not particularly on his right there. side. Okay. I might get you just to hold the front here yes, so he doesn't walk away. It's okay, Mo. 
Oh. So there's definitely restricted movement in that right hip there. So I think we'll get some x-rays today and see what's going on there. Okay, okay wonderful. Probably all to do with whatever trauma you've had, my sweetheart, you poor thing. He's all set, sort out that broken tooth and that Avol's lip. We'll get some x-rays of the hip and see what's going on there. And hopefully we can get that resolved as well. Perfect. Hey, beautiful. Oh, you're such a darling. I know, I know. We're gonna get you all sorted though, mate, hey? It's in. Oh my God. In Bondi, Kate urgently needs to try to get glass out of young golden retriever Skippy's foot. Skippy. But attempts to insert a catheter into the nervous dog are not going well. Oh my God, no, do not, do not. He's got to be a good boy for me for like one minute, okay? I know it's really hard for golden retrievers. Please don't do this. I do my absolute best to make the experience for the dogs as stress-free as I possibly can. However, welcome to being a vet. Sometimes stuff happens. Skip, I can't help you if you don't help me, mate. If you pull it out, mate, can't get it in, and then we can't do this. Ah, oh, buddy. Eventually, 45 minutes later, we get a vein. You're feeling tired. Success. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Good job, guys. Oh, sleepy. Let me just move this. Let's give it a bit of a clean. Kate can now finally start the delicate process of trying to see how much glass is in Skippy's painful foot. In that left paw, I can see a really large gash. My first impression of this is that it's really deep. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, it looks glass, all right. That's a problem. It looks like as though that there's glass that's basically gone straight through that foot. No wonder this is so sore. Whoa, shards of glass. How are we going to get all this out? Would have hurt so much. His poor lip has actually been ripped off. And there's definitely restricted movement in that right hip there. At the lost dog's home in Melbourne. We'll see what's going on with you, hey? Danny is about to x-ray 10-month-old stray cat Mo, starting with his worrying jaw. Okay, x-ray. Next, Danny is concerned about Mo's hips and the possibility he may have suffered a serious injury. Danny will be working with guidance from the Lost Dogs Home senior vet, Sue. So that's the tooth in question. It's looking pretty good. I can't it is. See any There's damage. a little bit of damage there, but yeah, I that think that tooth is fine. One less problem. The canine tooth looks great. We don't need to take that out, which is wonderful. But that right leg. Oh, oh my God, the oh. poor cat. So that cat will be in a lot of pain. Oh There's my God, the multiple poor breaks thing. there. And there's actually that, a few fragments that's... around there. <gasps> that's really nasty. Oh, just all that, the fragments just rubbing up against each other would just be so painful. And he's going to need surgery. Mm. Mo, unfortunately, has probably been hit by a car. His back leg is not actually attached to his pelvis at the moment. And he's got multiple fragments that we need to deal with. This is a really bad break and it takes a huge force to do this. So we're just getting Mo all prepped for surgery so that we can get all those fragments out of his poor little hip. But there's still the risk that we could cause nerve damage in the process. If that happens, then it may mean Mo has to lose his leg. He's, he's on you. It can smell fresh blood. At the Australian Reptile Park, it's feeding time for the 500 kilo, 60 year old crocodile, Elvis. Everyone good? It's also a baptism of fire for Tim's two rookies, Jake and Sam. I'll lead him, Sam, and you just follow me. So just kind of what you're looking for is where I tap and certain positions I don't stand in, and obviously I want you to be safe as well. So 
Good to go? Yep. Let's do it. This is really one of the most dangerous things you can do here. If Elvis was to grab a hold of someone, he's going to take you in the water, he's going to shake your arm off, roll your arm off. Worst case is he grabs you around the torso. You can die. So we'll get him to swing. I'll probably just tap on this backside of Lamandra here. He's not even that worried. Like, I can tap and he's following straight away. Dan's got to take Elvis to the other side of the pool so that we can bring the food in. Jeez, he's coming fast, Dan. He's really moving. Um, general feed, he wouldn't move this quick because he knows he's got a big feed coming. He's highly motivated. If he grabbed you and pulled you in the water, it's game over. I've been working with Elvis for a number of years. I always want to be safe. I always want to go home at the end of the day. Now I've got new guys working with me. I want them to be just as safe. Still below the surface, a little tap, bring him up. Again, watching his feet, front leg forward, bring him up. You a bit nervous there, mate. <laughs> I've done this a number of times, but my hands are shaking and my heart is beating. How's he looking, Dan? Yep, he's set, boys. We're good. I'm getting a bit nervous now. Yeah, me too. That's our chance to grab the beef and bring it in and get it ready to give it to Elvis. Ready, mate? Right up. One, two, three. That's when things can go wrong. So this needs to be a real smooth part of the process. OK, in. Yeah, he's on me. Let's get it up in that corner. Come mate. around, come around. A little bit more, I reckon, Jake, right where he can't see it. What we don't want is the crocs in that too early, or us, because we've had it before. He just comes bashing it out to the corner and grabs it. Come around that first bend. When Dan is, right boys, he's turning, then we move. We've got a rope attached to the meat so that we can give Elvis that reward and stimulation, the big beast he is, of killing prey. But he only eats little bits, and crocs in the wild will go and store that food under a tree or a rock underwater. And we don't want that rotting meat to be a part of his water. So we need a little bit broken off, and then we've got to get the rest out. All right, boys, he's turning, he's on me. Right, go time for us, boys. Let's yeah, go. I got him. He's Just on that first easier. bend. Easier. So, mate, you're on that rope. Yep. Coming around that first No tangles bend. on you, no tangles on us. As it goes, you get ready. OK, ready, Jake? We'll aim for the mat. Jake, give it a little bit of slack. One, two, go now. Three. Back, back, back. Hold that rope, mate. Here he comes. He's, he's, he's seen he's, it. He's Watch coming. out there, Jakey. Now it's go time, and Elvis turns into a freight train. Just Watch out there. He's on. Watch it. He's focused on that meat, and bang. Hold him. Oh, hold him. Oh, oh. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. Take it in, take it in. We don't want him to get it too quick. Whew. Okay, just hold him, let him settle for a minute. Think he's killed it. You're right, boys. Whew. That was good. Hear that crunch? Oh. Oh. Hey, fellas, when this goes, it breaks, he swallows it, we're out, okay? Oh, it's gonna go, boys. Hold. Oh. Okay, oh. out, 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 meat out. That's a great sign, that's a win. Elvis has grabbed it. <laughs> But before we get a chance to get the meat out of the yard, he's right up us. Too oh, quick, go, boys. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go. Bow, bow, bow. Go, 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 go. Whoa. Shards of glass. In Bondi, Kate's shocked at just how deep the cut is on Skippy's paw after the young golden retriever stood on broken glass at the beach. How are we going to get all this out? It's just so much glass. So they're like tiny, tiny little shards of glass all through this foot. There is a piece of glass. Is that the bottle? It was a bottle apparently. Yeah, they could be a bottle. Yeah. Okay, there's a piece there. It's going to be hard to know if we've got all of the glass out. It's really easy to miss a piece, right? Like there's so many little bits in here, but I can't see any massive bits. Oh, he doesn't like that there. Oh, well, that's deep there. OK, I feel like now I'm just digging around. I've pulled out as much glass as I can possibly get out with those tweezers. What we're going to need to do from here is give it a really good flush out. This is just some sterile saline to try and see if we can't just flush this wound and any remaining little shards of glass out. So we keep the needle head on when we're flushing so that we can get some pressure and the saline can really get in there and give it a really good flush. Notoriously, these paw pads are terrible at being stitched back together. 
they've got really bad healing. You can stitch them back together and in three days time, they've all just, the stitches are pulled apart. I find that the best way to do it is just to bandage them until that they heal and they close themselves. But obviously if he's walking on it without a bandage, it's not going to get better. It's going to just keep opening up. So let's just put a little wee bandage. It's going to go up above this hock to there. It's going to be a mission to keep this bandage on Skippy. A mission. He has to not have that foot exposed to the elements. He can't be out there running at the dog park with no bandage on. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome back. Are you okay? Feeling okay? Don't have any glasses on your foot anymore, Skip. The operation's gone really well. One, two, and three. So Skip's 40 kilo backside is gonna go into recovery for him to sleep off the rest of his sedation. Hey Skip, you good? You're good. It's gonna be fine. Your leg is fixed. And don't shoot this bandage off, hey? Good job. Bye Skip, we'll see you soon. Too quick, boys. Go, go, go. go. Try and get out. At the Australian Reptile Park. Bow, bow, bow. Feeding time for ravenous five-year-old croc Elvis. Right out, we're back on. Some boys, he's got it. Is turning into a deadly game of tug of war for Tim and his team. Right? Everyone right? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch, Watch that, that tail, tail boys. That tail. tail, tail. If Elvis swings that tail around, he could break a leg, dislocate a knee very easily. Even more so, if he knocked one of us over and we fell on top of him, what do you think's going to happen? Let him go. Don't go in with him. Clean rope? Yep. Swing round, swing round. You got him, you got him. Ooh, well done, mate. Everyone good? Yep. Well, that didn't go to plan. One, one. <laughs> and now it's round two. Elvis has got a huge chunk in his mouth at the moment, but their stomach's only the size of a basketball. We want him to feel like he's killed something big and drowned it, but we can't leave that meat in here. That's why it must come out. Jake, swap sides of the rope, please. Whoa, Whoa. hold him, boys. Jake, under. He could death roll any time for a big, territorial, 60-year-old male croc, this is the meaning of life. Here he goes. He's not gonna like it, yep. N not there anymore. We there we go. As soon as it breaks, you've gotta get back, okay? He's gonna swallow it and we're out. This has turned into a tug of war between a half-ton croc and four people. Whoa! Woo. It's starting to break. Yeah, switch. Rook, get up there, get up there. What's that rope around your leg, boys? Look after the fella in front of you. Don't let him pull you in. Worst thing that can happen now is the rope gets caught around someone's leg, or even worse, is that Elvis does an almighty head shake and one of us go in on top of him. Big roll, big roll, big roll, roll, big roll. Tell us when he's building, Jakey. Oh, here we go. Give it everything, boys. One thing's clear, Elvis is not giving up this piece of meat. He's not letting it go until a bit breaks off and who knows when that'll be. Give, go, it, every go. give it everything. Yeah, pull him up boys, give him a good tug. Oh, 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 oh we lost oh, it. Oh. Rope pay up. The rope pops off. First time that's happened. Normally, we have the rope with the big chunk of meat and Elvis gets the little bit. This time, we get the little bit, he gets the meat. <laughs> <sighs> That didn't go to plan again. Who's going to get that out? <laughs> he's got huge teeth. He's got a ton of downward pressure. There's no way we're going to get that back off him now. This is a dream come true for Elvis. What did we learn today, boys? Don't let him get you. That's right. And nothing goes to plan. But if you're safe, he's safe. The rest doesn't matter. Tie your rope. Yeah, who tied a knot on that? If you don't know knots, tie lots. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Right, up. well we've got jobs to do. We'll keep an eye on him. Let's get out no. of here. Here we go. Got Jinx for you. Hello, little man. Yeah. You can say hi, Jinx, if you want. Hi Jinx. Oh, hi Jinx. Nice, I like it, I like it. At Scott's Isleworth Clinic in the UK, Toy Poodle Jinx has just arrived with a very unusual problem. Jinx has too many teeth in his small mouth because his baby teeth simply never fell out. 
his mouth is just something that I think I've never seen. So um, it's gonna be quite an interesting procedure today. Hey. We're removing what's called deciduous teeth, so baby teeth. He's a little shy about his mouth, yeah. I think, for good reason. Yeah, see how, see how joyful he is about his mouth? Are you gonna let me show everyone? Normally they're pushed out by the adult teeth, so you have a baby tooth and you have an adult tooth and it pushes out yeah. and out it comes. And then it's a very natural process, but in his case, none of the teeth have fallen out. Well, you don't want to show anyone. You know what we'll do is we'll give him an anaesthetic yeah. So that he's deprived of his oh, shyness <laughs> about his mouth. Hey. Jinx has the most incredible mouth. I've come across some amazing array of teeth problems in animals over the years, but to see a dog's mouth that looks more like a shark's, it's absolutely insane. Oh, wow. It's pretty awesome, oh, isn't it? It really is. And look at that. Sometimes it's the little poodle dogs that you do see these retained deciduous canines, mm. but this is a pretty extreme version. That's insane. The normal process is that a dog's deciduous or baby teeth are pushed out by the adult teeth, but in Jinx's case, this hasn't happened. And right now, he has a mouth full of trouble. See, look, look at oh, that. Oh, Jinx. The concern here is there's nothing to force them out. And when you've got something that really shouldn't be there, eventually you'll get infection, you'll get discomfort, mm -hmm. and then you get more problems. So at the moment, he's not that bothered by them, but in time he will be if we don't sort them out. Oh my God, the oh. poor cat. <gasps> That's really nasty. <sighs> at the lost dog's home, Perfect. Danny and senior vet Sue are preparing to perform surgery on Mo's shattered leg. So I'm just making an incision over the hip joint. Mo's surgery today, the fact we've got multiple bone fragments in there and we're a tiny little cat, uh, I think it will be quite challenging. So we're just trying to feel for where the hip joint is, where the bony fragments are. It's really strange feeling this leg because it's just completely detached from the joint. So it's just floating around. We know we need to do surgery today, but we're also very much aware that there could be complications, including paralysis in that right leg, if there's nerve damage during surgery. So there is a chance that he still may lose that leg. It's not easy visual though, is it's it? It's not. It's not an easy yeah. visual at all. It's another level of stress. Oh, hello. Yeah, found it. So that's great. So the next challenge is actually getting in behind the head of the femur that's just sitting there loose in the joint to disconnect the ligament that's holding it snug in there. Oh. So this may not look like much, but that is the head of the femur that's been stuck in the joint and would have been causing so much pain and discomfort with all the fragments there. So fantastic. We've got the first fragment out. Oh, look at that. If that fragment was left there, that would continue to cause soft tissue trauma. If you think of a sharp bone just pressing against all your muscles and soft tissue be very, very painful. So it's really important that we have a nice smooth surface for that leg to be comfortable in the future. Oh, yes. Yeah, got it? Yes. Yeah. We thought we had all those fragments removed and of course there is one more and it's tucked right up high out of our reach. So it's a really challenging fragment to remove. Oh, it's right there, damn it. Finally, the stubborn fragment is removed. See all that blood, vascular. So far there's been three separate fragments from this fracture that we've had to remove. So the next step is flushing out this fracture site so we get all the little bits of fragment that we can't manually grab and then we'll be all ready to close. Okay. I am still concerned about whether there's going to be any nerve damage and until Mo is recovered and up and about, we're just not going to know how well he can use that leg. So there's still some real concerns for him. Hey mate, well done. Very brave. 
you're a sweet little man. You messed up. The team of the Lost Dogs Home are just very special. The passion that they have for animal welfare and the journey that they have to get to their forever home, it's just incredible and I am loving being part of it. Thanks very much. Not See you, mate. <laughs>
Look at that. That's insane. In the UK, Scott's patient Jinx is about to undergo an unusual dental procedure. So these are kind of normal, the kind of spare canine, because that would normally push that one out. So yeah. that's just malocclusion, so they just haven't aligned properly mm -hmm. to push the adult out. So we see that quite a bit. But so it's on both sides, but it's the ones there. Yeah. That's incredible to see. You can see that's that's in front of that, yeah. you see. Wow. And then these are all in front of those. So those tiny little ones at the front. Yeah. So all of those need to come out, my friend, don't they? As a result, you get a, a huge amount of food being accumulated around them. So it does mean sore gums and rather pongy breath. Jinx has double rows of teeth because his baby teeth never fell out when the adult ones grew. The challenge for Scott will be working out which are the baby teeth and which are the adult ones. The adult teeth are quite small. The baby teeth are quite large and quite numerous. And there is some change to the way that they have erupted because the baby ones are pushing the adult ones. So they're settling in a slightly strange way. So I just need to take my time and make sure I remove the right ones. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the, um, the canine on this side. Okay, so that's one. There you go, that's another one. One of the challenges of removing teeth, particularly canines in pets, is that they have really long roots and when you are trying to remove them, sometimes the worst case scenario can be you can break their jaw. The surgery is extra tricky because of the confined space in which all the teeth have had to grow. That one and that one, I actually think, are adult teeth that have been pushed out. So these ones are abnormal. So let's have a look now and then we'll just see what that looks like. So, well, that looks more normal. It's back to looking like a dog. It's been a marathon surgery and Scott is making sure he hasn't missed any of the excess teeth. So what we have here now is a dog with all 42 teeth. 42 permanent adult teeth that he should have, they are in slightly odd positioning, some of them. And now he's missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight baby teeth. So now he's all good. Uh, all these gums will heal very, very quickly. They're very well perfused with blood, so they'll heal real quick. And he now is just a dog, no longer a shark. All right, so we can wake this guy up. It's a way to get the tooth fairy excited. Look at that. Well, hey, come and get it. It's okay. You're a good boy. Where's Auntie Catherine? There you go. Come on. Oh, good boy. Oh, little puppy. Right. Good boy. A very drowsy Jinx will now be left to have a big sleep. Good boy. That looks like part of his jawbone is just kind of fractured, fractured away. away. At the Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary, twins Alison and Audrey are in the middle of treating a joey with a shocking tooth abscess. Oh God, he's going blue. Is he not taking breaths? All of a sudden, the joey has stopped breathing. Can you just give him some pure oxygen, please? All right, let's do 10 breaths. Oh yeah, he's going pink now. It's a huge relief as Joe the joey starts breathing again. And now the twins can start cleaning out the massive infection in his jawbone. Oh, the pus is coming out the eye now. We're going to just try and lance the abscess from the outside. I'm just putting my finger through the, the root area where we removed that tooth and I can feel a piece of bone that we need to get out there. So 
So if I sort of hold the eyeball away and then you cut in a ventral motion downwards, mm -hmm. so that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Yep. Just move your finger. That's it. Get ready for the smell. Oh, it's strong. Oh. 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 There's so much pus coming out there. Oh. That's mm -hmm. a lot. I think possibly he fractured his, um, his jaw. His upper jaw. With the abscess now completely drained, the girls want to x-ray Joe's jawbone to get a clearer picture of the damage that may have been caused by the shocking infection. X-ray! It'd be interesting to see exactly what part and how much he's lost. So that's the top jaw here, that's the soft tissue swelling where the abscess was. That's where we removed the two teeth. You can see there's some bone loss here, so that's where it's all started. So just having a look at that x-ray, we can see the area of the jaw that's actually come away with the tooth. And I think there's probably some sort of traumatic injury hit by a car where that's really fractured that bone and then caused all this secondary infection. So lucky little man to make it today, and I'm sure he's feeling a lot better with all that pus and yeah. discharge out of his face. It's been a massive surgery for little Joe, and he'll now be left to sleep off the anaesthetic. Nice and warm. Here we go, Joe. 24 hours later, the twins are anxious to check on Joe and discover whether he'll be one of Possumwood's survivors. Oh, look at that. That third eyelid has retracted all the way back and it's no longer red and angry, so that's a huge improvement. You can see that pressure's really off the yeah. eyeball now that he yeah. can close that eye. There's no damage there, which is great. I'm just going to have a look in your mouth, baby. Let's have a look. Definitely smells a lot better. Yeah. So we're really happy with Joe's recovery. He's done really well overnight. Hey, can you see us a bit better now? Still a little bit groggy from the sedation, so we'll bring him to bed, and once he's recovered, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be bouncing around in no time. Doing very well. <laughs> oh, look at you. In the UK, are you ready to go and see Daddy? Hey? It's two hours after Jinx's marathon surgery, and he's ready to be reunited with his owner. There he is! How are you? There he is, is Daddy! Get him! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's the most animated he's been all day. This is such a good boy, but wow, what a set of gnashes. Yeah. Let me show you a picture on my phone. So look, that's his mouth there. Wow. I mean, look, two proper sets. So it's just That's the best look I've had in there. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Take this little dressing off when you get home. Just slide yeah. that off. That's just where his IV went in. Okay. Um, and then he's got some anti-inflammatories for you as well. Okay. All Thank right. You see you later. Much. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Jinxie. Bye. Bye. Hi Danny! Hi, nice to meet nice you! Nice to meet you too! I'm so excited to see Mo today. Oh, Mo's in the couch. <gasps> Let's come have a look. Come here. It's great news for Danny's patient Mo. After recovering well from his leg surgery, the brave little stray has been adopted into a loving new home. I wanted to thank you for doing so much good things for Mo. Pleasure. He's yeah. just such a special little man. Oh. One of the most stoic cats I've ever met. Oh. So thank you so much awesome. for adopting him. I'm very much happy to be his owner. Kate's patient Skippy has fully recovered from the nasty cut in his paw and is back enjoying walks at the beach. And little Joe the Joey is thriving after the twins treated a shocking abscess. It's hoped he'll eventually be able to be returned to the wild.